A 12-year-old boy is on life support after his parents say he may have tried a social media challenge. We wake up to the same reality and the same nightmare that Jessica and Lilia are gone. Imagine hundreds of thousands of kids around the world doing this for fun. For 40,000 likes, <laughs> they're just doing it for fun. Like, what the f happened to humanity, bro? <laughs> Ah, uh, TikTok. You'll find everything from cute animal videos to activists fighting for a cause. TikTok isn't like any other social media platform because it has a unique algorithm. It uses machine learning to create a personalized feed specifically for you. And the majority of TikToks are created by average people just like you and me. You guys remember Kabi Lame, a machine operator who got laid off to become the second most followed TikToker of all time. On the surface, this seems incredible, but we need to dig a bit deeper on how TikTok first got started. TikTok isn't your typical entrepreneurial startup story. They didn't start as a couple of friends in their mom's basement. The app started its life as three different apps. The first was an app called Musical.ly, which launched in China in 2014. And in 2016, a Chinese tech giant called ByteDance launched the app Douyin, which attracted 100 million users in only one year. ByteDance knew they were onto something massive. So in 2018, ByteDance expanded by buying Musical.ly and rebranded into the behemoth we know today, TikTok. It was business as usual, but there's some information from an inside source that says it's anything but usual. This TikTok recruiter decided to stay anonymous in fear of being punished. She explained to CNBC that her work hours were supposed to be from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., but she found herself always working double shifts. Why? Well, the company's Chinese executives are very involved in TikTok. They expect California employees to be available to work all hours of the day. This employee, along with four others, told CNBC that they had another concern about their Chinese parent company, ByteDance. Chinese employees have access to American user data, which runs pretty contrary to what we've heard thus far from the company. They admitted that ByteDance employees were able to access US data. This was confirmed when an American TikTok employee needed to compile a list of TikTok users from around the world. They reached out to the data team in China to access this list and they were shocked. TikTok's data team sent back user data that contained way too much personal information that TikTok had about those people. And we don't know if that information is safe because it even states in their privacy policy. We may share all the information we collect with a parent of our corporate group, which is ByteDance. This issue was so real that US government officials and their family members weren't even allowed to download TikTok. That's precisely what TikTok is. It has 100 million US users. It collects all of that information and more. But even if TikTok decides not to do anything bad with your data, ByteDance is a Chinese company and they're subject to Chinese law, which says that whenever the government asks for data from a company, they must hand it over. Cybersecurity experts spoke with CNBC about another risk working with China. The Chinese government could influence the thinking of Americans who use TikTok. This would come from videos that China wants to show Americans, even if it's propaganda, and they can censor content too. In 2019, TikTok moderators were told to censor videos that mentioned Tiananmen Square, which was a massacre where Chinese military fired at protesters, leaving thousands lifeless. And in 2020, TikTok's director of public policy admitted that the app censored content that was related to forced Muslim labor in China. Anytime the Chinese government has control over a platform like TikTok, it gives them the power to feed our mind what we should think about, what we consider true, and what is false. The reality is, TikTok doesn't care about you. In 2019, a Brazilian vlogger by the name of Joao filmed a live stream on TikTok. The day before, he issued a warning to his fans that he was planning a special performance. With 280 people glued to his live stream, the young vlogger ended his life. The video was up for almost two hours after the incident. TikTok's Brazil office found out and took the video down, but TikTok waited three hours before contacting the police. So what were they doing in those three hours? 
Well, TikTok officials gave orders to make sure that the story did not go viral. They decided to contact their PR team to create a condolence message. They also created a press statement in case the incident went viral. Only after all this, they finally called the police. You might not have even heard of this story because to this day, it practically had no TV coverage. I mean, it's pretty clear from the beginning that TikTok never put us first. With millions of dollars in funding and employees practically working 24-7, they were able to tap into the psychology of the human brain like no app has ever done in history. And this next chapter is going to blow your mind because I'm going to show you just how TikTok knows you better than you know yourself. TikTok actually told its moderators to suppress posts made by ugly and poor people so they wouldn't get as many views. So Biometric Mirror, for instance, is trained by way of artificial intelligence to distinguish how intelligent you are, how attractive, how weird, how responsible, and how emotionally unstable you are. I think we can all agree. Social media is addicting. What do you do when you hear a notification on Discord? Your focus shifts to the sound and you just have to check out what it is. What about scrolling through meme pages on Instagram? Do you have the willpower to look at just one photo? What about posting a tweet? A lot of times we get the urge to speak our mind. According to a Harvard study, sharing information about yourself on social media lights up the same part of your brain that addictive substances do. Your dopamine levels, which are responsible for pleasure, rises. So this is basically how social media affects your brain. But TikTok, TikTok takes it to a whole new level. With 800 million users active each month, it's the fastest growing social media platform in the world. And leaked information shows that users spend about 1.5 hours on it every day. You know, it's like 8 p.m. and I'm watching and watching and then I look up at my clock and it's 2 a.m. And I'm like, where the heck did those hours go? It's the most addictive app right now. I mean, I could stop myself getting off Twitter. TikTok is just easy to get addicted to. Keep scrolling, it's just content, content. You never know what's gonna come up. This is something new every time. So why is TikTok so addicting? Bloomberg business reporter Shelly Banjo gave us an inside look on ByteDance's work culture. She said that employees are working from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. But in reality, it's more like a 24-hour work culture because you're expected to answer all the time. It's normal for people to get so burnt out because they can't take the workload, so they leave. The time and effort TikTok takes into crafting the algorithm is unlike any other platform. Other apps like Instagram prioritize showing you photos of people who you follow. But on TikTok, recommendations come first. As soon as you hop on the app, you're hit with an infinite viewing experience of videos you never chose to watch. This It just suggests you things. You, you just click, it keeps learning you based on what you click on, and then you keep clicking, keep feeding them more information of the type, about the type of person you are, and then it just it becomes so smart that it figures out your every move. TikTok is designed to figure out what you like. A girl named Lauren Hemmings was bored at home, so she decided to download TikTok. She wanted to create an account for fun. I never had the intention of making TikToks or sharing them. It was more just kind of from the, the viewpoint of, yeah, the viewer. She started following a fitness influencer who was losing weight. TikTok's algorithm picked up on that and began flooding her feed with weight loss videos. TikTok pushed Lauren toward the popular trend of meticulously tracking how many calories you eat in a day. What started off as a healthy habit eventually turned into a serious problem. I felt that I could not eat anything um, without knowing how many calories it contained. It came to the point where she couldn't put anything in her mouth that she didn't weigh. And four months later, Lauren finally admitted that she had an eating disorder. The algorithm caught on to her interests and satisfied her cravings for that type of content. TikTok seems to know you more than you know yourself. As soon as you sign up, it starts collecting data. It finds out everything about you from your location to your age to your gender. But here's where things get creepy. TikTok also collects biometric data. In other words, your face. In 2021, there was a change in TikTok's policy that says it may collect biometric identifiers and information from its users. Your face is a form of biometric information and your face can be analyzed 
to distinguish a range of personality and demographic traits. TikTok collects this data every time you create a video or use a filter. And it can even collect data from the photos saved on your phone, even if you aren't using the app. They use artificial intelligence to create a profile for you. So Biometric Mirror, for instance, is trained by way of artificial intelligence to distinguish how intelligent you are, how attractive, how weird, how responsible, and how emotionally unstable you are. It can even tell if you're going through an emotionally difficult time just from looking at your face. I mean, it's, it's wild. You might be presented um, with videos that are created by users with going through a similar challenge at that time. And most of the time, this can sink you even deeper into depression. But as long as your eyes are glued to the screen, that's all that matters to the company. TikTok doesn't care. There have been reports that TikTok is actually spying on you. After the iOS 14 update, Apple caught TikTok secretly accessing the clipboard on people's phones. Apple talked to TikTok about the issue, and they gave the excuse that they did this to identify spammy behavior. But they said that they were going to remove this feature to eliminate any confusion. In other words, they were caught, so they needed to fix it ASAP. This next point is only a theory, but a lot of people seem to have experiences like this. People are saying that TikTok was listening to their conversations. A Reddit user even showed a picture of TikTok using their microphone even if they weren't recording anything. Tunde also experienced something similar. I was scrolling on TikTok last night. My first five minute on there, I ran across this video and it was ex the exact thing I was talking to my friend about like a day before. Again, it's just a theory, but this next point isn't. In 2020, the news outlet The Intercept leaked moderation policies for TikTok staff. In these documents, TikTok's moderators were told to avoid promoting posts from people with abnormal body shape, chubby, have obvious beer belly, obese, or too thin. They also targeted ugly facial looks. This includes anything from having a lack of front teeth, obvious facial scars, and even old people with too many wrinkles. They went as far as to stop the promotion of posts if the background wasn't up to their standards. Slums, cracks on the walls, and a messy environment. TikTok avoided showing things that were less fancy and less appealing so that they can bring in more users. I mean, this is, this is crazy. TikTok stated that these guidelines are no longer implemented We'll never truly know. I mean, I could see that, right? Because the majority of TikTokers are like either attractive or they just, they don't have these deformities like the guidelines say. But the worst part of all this is that the majority of TikTokers are under age. I saw you from like across the street. I think you're really pretty. I want to kiss you right now. Like, if you would let me kiss you, I would kiss you. Bye. <laughs> I mean, I think you're attractive. That's why I'm talking to you. Like, are you I can kiss you. Kids are obsessed with TikTok, but the problem is kids aren't the only ones who can't keep away. A recent investigation found that children as young as eight were being groomed on TikTok. For those of you who don't know what that means, it's when someone builds a trusting relationship with a child so they can manipulate them for their own desires. BBC interviewed a couple, Chris and Haley. They have a 10 year old son who just recently downloaded TikTok. One day, Chris saw messages blowing up his son's phone. And I've come home from work then obviously turned on the phone and looked at the messages and then uh, in, in they were like, do not ignore me. Um, I know who you are, but swearing, I know who you are and I'll come and get you. Chris saw that the messages were coming from TikTok and when he clicked on the user sending them, he saw the photo of an adult man. He checked his son's inbox and found three more messages sent by three different men. They deleted the app, but this whole situation affected their son. We were sort of trying to give him a bit of um a bit more freedom at sort of walking to school with his friends and walking home from school with his friends and he won't do that now. He wants to be picked up all the time. This is only one instance and we haven't even touched the surface. I mean, if you're on TikTok, you've probably seen messages like these or have even received some yourself. This is definitely a problem. The pred we're gonna talk about is William Donald Haynes, AKA the Boudet. He became a TikTok star by creating cringe videos. A ton of YouTubers reacted to his content and I can see why. No one suspected anything bad from him. 
But then, he started creating duet videos with young girls. A woman by the name of Liz had been collecting TikToks of creepy men and posting them on Instagram. So she posted videos of the boudet, and one of her followers, who was 14, teamed up with her to find out if he really was creepy. He and this 14-year-old began DMing each other. At first, we were talking about my cosplays and how he wanted to cosplay. But after she told him her age, William began sending some really creepy messages. He sent her dozens of videos shirtless, licking his lips and kissing the camera. So obviously, for you to be able to message a 14-year-old girl, I mean, and even not only that, you sent kissy faces and all types of gestures to the kid. I mean, something gotta be up with you, bro. After being exposed, more girls came forward saying that the boudet had been sending them the same thing. And after TikTok caught on, he was finally banned. To my knowledge, he didn't do anything bad in real life. But there are other weirdos who use TikTok for more shocking reasons. You might have heard of Dan Silly, also known as the Downtown LA Pred. I referred to Nick Crowley's video. Dan would simply walk around Los Angeles, camera in hand, and take videos of him trying to pick up women. But he wouldn't do it respectfully. I like you. When I saw you back there, I like the way you look. Almost all of these women were super uncomfortable, but Dan didn't seem to pick up on that because he just kept on creating videos. I'm a nice guy. I'm not a, I'm not a predator. I'm a nice person. I didn't do anything wrong. I mean, on the surface, you could tell this guy's a creep, but sometimes he shares his thoughts about women and it's even more disturbing. I literally do feel like freaking like, like destroying these women when I accost them. My reptilian brain like literally feels like attacking these women. But the worst part is that most of the women he recorded were not women, but young girls. I like you. Happy New Year. What's your name? You. What's your name? 33-year-old Dan was caught and was registered as an offender. He moved out of Los Angeles for a bit, but word spread quickly that he was moving right back. I wonder why. A public warning was issued by the police that Dan was considered high risk to reoffend. And in February of 2021, his YouTube channel was deleted. So where does TikTok play a role in all this? Well, Dan's story doesn't end with his channel gone. He went back to making videos, but this time, on TikTok. And even after being caught, he still persists in what he believes. Everyone needs to get married and to a virgin girl who's under. He believes that men should marry girls at 14, stating that this is when they are most pure. But he's even a bigger threat because he's trying to build a community of like-minded people, aka kid lovers. His LinkedIn had the description, I need help to build a Disneyland-like polygynist residential gated community. The community will emphasize teen marriage. It should be within Nevada because the age of consent is 16 there. It is the safest, healthiest, happiest place in the world. Nick Crowley explains that Dan posted a video about his desire to meet a girl around the age of 12. He would then build a relationship with her and her family, then ask the girl's parents for her hand in marriage. He's not afraid to talk about his feelings openly. And in one of his TikToks, he made his motive extremely clear. I make this video because I want to make videos on TikTok. Obviously the reason why I want to become famous is for a reason, I mean, not just to make money, but to become seen in the eyes of girls, of girls, virgin watch TikTok because a lot of teenagers watch are on TikTok. His goal is to appeal to the younger generation so he can find a wife. What's especially dangerous about a guy like Dan is that he doesn't believe he's doing anything wrong. He's worked diligently to try to create appealing TikToks not just for clout but to find a corrupt relationship. So we've only talked about two prats but y'all know there's like thousands of them on TikTok. But there's something else that's disturbing and fooling millions of people. Faking illnesses. Uh, I just wanted to pop in and, you know, just give a little update and just say I'm not autistic. One million and then I would make the big reveal like, hey guys, uh, yeah, it was all an act. So the more I use TikTok, the more I see kids in their endless pursuit for attention. It started as harmless trends like dancing and lip syncing. But there's a new trend taking the app by storm, faking illnesses. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, God. 
Kids are faking everything from ADHD to anxiety to autism. I mean, this is just messed up. And one of the app's most faked conditions is Tourette syndrome. There was a TikToker named Emerald who went by the username Ticks and Roses. She claimed to have been diagnosed with Tourette's when she was a child. Tourette's is a disorder that produces involuntary movements called tics. In 2021, she built a massive audience of 500,000 followers and used her account to raise awareness about Tourette's. But the only problem was she didn't really have it. Someone found a video of her Facebook page that was one minute and 53 seconds long. And in that entire video, she didn't tick once. She started to receive backlash from her followers, but had a reasonable explanation. Her excuse was that her ticks didn't happen all the time, so she could sometimes record short videos without them at all. Seems reasonable, right? But digging even deeper, Reddit found a 54 minute live stream of Emerald with not a single tick. TikTok permanently banned her account and her sister spoke out about what happened. I don't believe Emerald has Tourette's syndrome and they never showed any symptoms as a child. I love my sister, always will, and I wish them the best, but I don't agree with what they've done. It's incredibly disrespectful to fake a mental illness. So Emerald's story hits home for me because I suffer from mild tics. As I'm recording this video, I'm literally like ticking a lot and I'm just pausing the video so that I don't get any of these ticks on camera. And it's just, it's weird because you have someone that's like pretending to have them. And for me, I, I want them to go away. Faking Tourette's is one thing, but in this next case, a TikToker faked something much more sensitive. There's a person that goes by the username MilesJJ on TikTok, who labeled himself as having autism. He posted wholesome videos of him going about his daily life. I was getting ready to go home and I came to the tree that I locked my bike on and I found this. So my bike was stolen. He was always known to have a positive attitude, no matter what his circumstances. My coworker is going to give me a ride, which is really nice of them. And my mom could give me a ride to work tomorrow. So I'm not too angry about it, but I'll have to buy another bike, which is kind of bad, but. People genuinely loved the guy and some YouTubers even made videos about him. That is how I came across the most wholesome guy on TikTok. I cannot stop saying the most wholesome guy on TikTok because this guy truly needs to be protected. He would post videos of himself working all day at Five Guys so he could provide for his mom. Almost 500,000 people felt bad for him and many people were even begging him to set up a way to donate to him. I saw a lot of people saying I should make a Venmo, I should make a Cash App or a PayPal. So I already had a PayPal set up, but I made a Venmo and a cash app. But it was all a lie. This guy was stealing money from his fans that wanted to help him and his mom. Miles JJ's goal was to hit 1 million followers, then do the big reveal. But his guilt took over and he confessed. Uh, I just wanted to pop in and, you know, just give a little update and just say I'm not autistic. I'm just saying it. So my whole plan, I wanted to get to 1 million followers because I knew I could do it. I just. I knew I could do it. So when I asked for money at the time, it was okay for like a day. I was like, oh yeah, I get to buy a new bike and stuff. But then it just like over time, it's like the guilt and like everything just started piling up. Obviously his fans were furious, but especially the ones who donated to him. The same YouTuber that talked about this guy being so wholesome went on to create another video. This is beyond disgusting. Holy sh I just cannot believe it. Today, Miles JJ isn't anywhere to be found online. So before YouTube, I was an ABA therapist, which means that I took care of people with autism. And sometimes like seeing the families that I would like work with, like it would kind of break my heart because I see that they're actually struggling a lot. And it's just disrespectful to have somebody fake autism for clout. It doesn't sit right with me, you know? This trend became so popular that there's even a subreddit called r slash fake disorder cringe with over 200,000 members. I mean, this trend is just horrible, but there's another one that's even more disgusting and it's actually taken many lives. Challenges. A 12 year old boy is on life support after his parents say he may have tried a social media challenge. Yeah. Just pay attention because you never know what you might find in their phones or the things they try that you think 10 year olds wouldn't try.
FOMO, fear of missing out. It's a real thing. It's the feeling that other people are having more fun, more experiences, and living better lives than you. I mean, it's really easy to understand why people have FOMO from social media. You literally see people always wearing smiles on their faces to take the most perfectly lit photo. But it's not just pictures that make people have FOMO. It's also trends. I mean, you got the WAP dance by Cardi B and Bella Porch's It's M to the B. But trends can also be other things that catch on, like ASMR, which only recently became popular. But there are other trends that are completely sickening. One trend that's been going around is romanticizing killers. In 2018, Cameron H joined in on an illegal street race. Driving 100 miles an hour, he hit 24-year-old Jessica and her 20-month-old daughter, Lilia, as they were crossing the street. They didn't survive. We wake up to the same reality and the same nightmare that Jessica and Lilia are gone. Cameron was given 24 years in prison and TikTokers came together to support his freedom because he was quote unquote too cute to be in prison. The hashtag justice for Cameron gained over 26 million views. Even his own mother was weirded out. His mother explained that she appreciated the support at first, but it turned into an unhealthy obsession. So to a certain extent, I mean, I feel bad for the kid because I know he didn't intend to do it, but to say that he was too cute for prison, I mean, come on. His admirers were sending letters, calling in the middle of the night, and even exposing the personal information of Cameron's own fiance. TikTok is also known for having the most horrifying challenges. The BO challenge. For YouTube's sake, I'm gonna be abbreviating it. This is a perfect example of just how disturbing these TikTok trends can be. It's a stupid challenge where you hold your breath or put your hands on your neck until you pass out. Last year, a 12-year-old boy who I'm gonna call JH passed after three weeks of being on life support. JH took part in this challenge and his twin brother found him. Imagine being 12 years old and having to see this whole thing play out. It's traumatizing and JH's father explained. The doctors told me the bad news that he He's not going to survive. I was begging on the floor, pleading to see if they can give me some time not to give up on him. And he wasn't the only person who passed away from this challenge. N.A. loves to dance on TikTok. Scrolling through her feed, this challenge caught her attention. She used her mother's purse to do the challenge, but couldn't free herself in time. After five days in the hospital, she passed. And the list of failed attempts goes on. Another insane challenge was the Ben challenge. How you do it is by taking this anti-allergy medication, but way more than the normal amount, sometimes 10 or 15 times more than what's recommended. The goal is to take a large enough amount to hallucinate. Chloe, who was 15, was a sophomore at Blanchard High School. She was involved in school activities and planned on getting her driver's license soon. And later down the line, she wanted to be a lawyer too, but that would never happen because she joined in on this challenge and passed away. Taking too much of this medication can lead to heart attacks, stroke, brain damage, and even worse. As a kid, you feel like you're invincible. You touch a stove thinking that it might not burn you, or you jump a flight of 20 stairs thinking you can do it, but you obviously fail. And when we add the fact that you're chasing TikTok clout, it's a recipe for disaster. Another incredibly stupid challenge is the SB challenge. If you've ever watched one of these videos, they start off like any other video. You have three people side by side looking like they're ready to dance, but they definitely don't dance. The person in the middle jumps, but what that person doesn't expect is that the two people on the side kick their legs, sending them falling to the ground. This trend went viral, and in New Jersey, two kids were charged with third-degree aggravated assault after giving their victim a concussion. These trends are getting out of hand. And all for what? Clout? Imagine hundreds of thousands of kids around the world doing this for fun. For 40,000 likes, <laughs> they're just doing it for fun. Like, what the f happened to humanity, bro? <laughs> the fear of missing out is real. To be honest, when I look back at my old friends on Instagram, Sometimes it makes me feel sad, right? They're enjoying themselves, going on vacations while I'm stuck here doing these YouTube videos. I'm just kidding. But seriously, sometimes we can get so caught up in trying to look good for others that we forget. No one cares. So all in all, is TikTok bad? No. When you've had a long day of school and just want to unwind at the end of the day, by all means, go on TikTok. 
And if you're ready to lose weight and find fitness TikTokers that inspire you, go watch them. But like I always say though, life is about balance. If you're on TikTok, you have the responsibility to limit yourself. You need to go take breaks and sometimes just touch grass. Remember when we used to read books and go outside and ride bikes and stuff? Bro, I don't overthink. When was the last time you've looked at a star, bro? That's the average for me. When was the last time you went outside and stared at the stars? On this insanely addicting app, we need to learn to say enough is enough. Because in the end, balance is not something you find. It's something you create. Visual Venture. Wait, before you go, please click here to watch more internet documentaries because in order for us to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2022, YouTube needs to know that y'all binge watch my content. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to make a difference in people's lives. And now with YouTube, I'm able to do that because of you guys. Thank you so much. I love you all. Peace.